In React 3 Fiber, objects are referred to as meshes, and a mesh is composed of two components. The first component is the geometry, which defines the shape of the mesh. The second component is the material, which defines the surface of the mesh and how it appears, particularly when affected by different types of light. So to add a sphere to the scene, I'll create a mesh component with two children, the sphere geometry and the mesh basic material. Of course, there are various properties we can modify, with the most obvious one being the radius of the sphere. To adjust it, we use the args prop, which accepts an array of arguments. Specifically, the first element in this array is the radius. As you can see, the sphere is larger, but it doesn't appear smoothly rounded. Actually, let's add a couple more arguments to the array and observe how its shape is affected. Now, you might be wondering why the sphere isn't rounded and what are the new arguments that I've just added. Well, in React 3 Fiber and in the field of 3D graphics in general, the geometries of meshes consist of a set of triangles formed from points, also known as vertices, and segments. With that being said, the more segments and vertices a geometry has, the smoother and more detailed the mesh surface becomes. Returning to the sphere, the default number of geometry segments was insufficient to make the mesh perfectly rounded, Additionally, reducing the number of segments further made the sphere look even less rounded. We can visualize these segments by activating the wireframe mode in the material. Now, let's increase the number of segments and observe how the sphere changes. By the way, the second element of the array represents the number of width segments, while the third element represents the number of height segments. React 3 Fiber offers various geometries that we can use, so for example, to add a cube, we can use the box geometry. To change the dimensions, we use the args prop. The first three elements of the array are the width, height, and depth. Now, to change the material's color, we need to use the color prop. We can use the name of the color or its hexadecimal representation. Just like with geometries, there are many materials to choose from depending on the case. That said, let's use the mesh fong material this time. As you can see, the color information is lost because materials like mesh fong material require light to be visible. So let's add a light source, and by the way, I'll cover more about lights in a future video. As you can see, the color now appears but looks dark because we are viewing the cube's shadowed side, which is minimally affected by light. So what we'll do now is move the camera to view the highlighted parts. To do that, we'll use the camera prop in the canvas and set its new position. We also have the mesh tool material which gives objects a cartoonish look. For a better visualization of the effect, I'll use the torus knot geometry this time. 